species. Whatever happens today, today's story is going to be centered around a new species that we're going to encounter uh, here in the Meta Black. The theme of today's storyline. Social. Okay, so this is going to be the theme is going to be something that more that involves communication, people, you know, uh, maybe many people. plot point social this isn't working gonna roll another rural setting government this isn't working rural setting government hmm So obviously this is going to take place somewhere uh, in the open desert, which there's a lot of that around here, right? Government, this isn't working in a creature. Chris Johnson, what's up? Let me let me ask here. Let me let me ask here. Is there some sort of civilization in a, in a rural setting that is having issues? And I don't mean to be too cliche here, but I. I need something. Is there some sort of little settlement that is having issues with a particular species? I'm going to say somewhat likely. Yes, but their their leaders, their leaders cannot come to an agreement on how they want to handle it. Is that is that what's happening? 50 50. No. It's not what's happening. What's happening is deceive slash randomness. All right. Social, right? Social is the theme. The people and the government think that there's someone involved. There's someone that knows more about why this thing is happening with the species. It's not random. It seems random, but that's the deception. I think I'm going to leave it at that because I want to discover the rest. But that that, that is the bare bones. There is a settlement. Um, I'm going to say that is this a settlement that we just maybe stumbled upon out in our travels? Very likely. Yes. And we need something from the settlement, which is why we're stopping and getting involved. So, you know, as a group, we are we are out exploring as we do. That's what we're, that's what our purpose is. Uh, and we, we there's something that we need. What is what exactly do we need? Why, why are we are we stopping into this town? Um, excitement slash victory. So while we were out in our adventures, you know, we're we were we're actually on our way back from Platinum Dwelling in the last session. And we're excited to have Trust Hitch back because remember, Trust Hitch went missing for a little bit and Trust Hitch's in Trust Hitch's episode. She went along with the Plappendale cultists. They kind of gave her a hairy opt ultimatum. She went along with them and we ran into her in the last session. Not going to spoil it. It's pretty cool. And we're excited that she's back. Kind of like when the, when everybody was happy, uh, Michael, uh, Raphael came back. <laughs> Remember he left, got beat up. They brought him back. They were sad because he got beat up. They were happy that their big brother was home. Trust Hitch got back to the crew. We're excited. Um, and we want to celebrate in, in, in the settlement that we discover that we, we come across. It's not even really a settlement to the point that I'm going to add it as a settlement. This is just a place where people had set up to live. So technically, yes, it's a settlement, but nothing worth uh, you know adding. How would you describe these trap? How, how would we describe these traveling these traveling groups? I'm going to say uh, I'm going to roll for that. Just want to. As we're as we when we see this this traveling group, this settlement, how would you describe the way they uh they appear? Oh shit. Anxiously defeated. Anxiously slash defeated. So they, they look worn and torn. They look worn down like because of travel. Is it because of travel? Somewhat likely. 
Yeah, but they've 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 been through some uh, combat. They've been through some. Uh, I like that. I like that. Refugees. Are, are there some refugees in here? Very likely. Yeah, there's some refugees. Are they all refugees? Somewhat unlikely. They're all refugees. Okay, we're going with refugees. It's just it's a traveling. It's a it's a you know we run into a, a traveling group of refugees, but this is common in this area, right? So would you know is is uh how many. What do we know about them? Do we have anybody in the group that could potentially know anything about a traveling band? I think that's why I started thinking of Varium Gray, but okay, if they are known to be traveling bands of refugees, um, that's history, right? That's history, right? Let me see. Uh, infiltration, response, reading lips. Varium Gray, do we know anything about where they come from? It's a good question. So with with Varium Gray's knowledge, with, which is high. I'm going to say the difficulty of just having this knowledge is uh, I'm going to say it's going to I'm going to say low. It's going to be Varium Gray's high history knowledge. To know to see if we know anything about where these people come from, from a history standpoint, does Varium Gray know anything about uh, from a history standpoint of where these people come from? Yes. Yes. And what we discover from Varium Gray is that these people come from what, what, what do we know about where these people come from? I'm going to ask the question here. Antagonize energy. Agree slash evil. Antagonize slash energy. <laughs> this don't sound good. I'll tell you that. But remember, this is a group of this is a. This is about a, this is not about the place. We got to remember the topic is about a species, a species. And. Um, Varium Gray says that sounds like they were forced out violently or maybe made to uh, make a choice they disagree with. I was thinking that initially. But. What's getting me is that agree slash evil. I'm, I'm interpreting that a little bit differently, but I'm, I'm a little conflicted because maybe we don't necessarily need to help these people. So all right, it's a settlement. There's a species that is um, a problem. I feel like these people are actually they are. These refugees are known to be, you know, on a, on the the, the side of of evil. They are not the greatest people. They are evil. You know, and the reason I say that is because I want to paint a world of black and white, and I want a dark, gritty world. I like. I'm thinking Raiders. I'm think. Yeah. Ren, uh, re, re, rainy day <laughs> oh, it, just, it just it just hit me rainy day i was processing it renee rain. Uh, i'm thinking raiders i'm thinking they are in the line of the people that are not you know they're not oh they're they're organized you know lawful evil is what i'm thinking and there's something going on with a species is what we'll learn and we'll learn about that as we you know we approach so let, let's say we come in you know, and and, uh, and the reason we're even comfortable with approaching them is because we know that, you know, because of Varium Gray, that they have some semblance of intelligence that they, they are. You can negotiate with them. They're not out just just to kill people, um, you know. The, oh, you know, these are the raiding bands of the sands, you know, something like that. Like we know they exist. They're out and about. And as long as you don't you know, antagonize them. They have that energy. They have an antagonizing energy about them. But as long as you, you know, conduct yourself in a, in a matter that doesn't have you colliding with them, we should be good. And this is kind of the pep. This is kind of what Varium Gray is telling us off of, you know, he, he he's he recalls from from his books that, the, you know, these individuals, these groups are out and about. They have they're all really they're they're not unified they're all in their little mini ra uh, refugee raider groups. We're going to say raider group. Refugees. 
Their, their settlement is a little worn down, a little worn down. They're a little worn down, but they're tough. They're tough. Is it a really, is it, is it a larger group than usual? Let, let me go ahead and roll potency to see what kind of, I'm really, I got to know these things. I got to know these things. I should probably move on, but I, I got to know these things. Um, I'll, I'll get better at, at you know, I'm going to fly by some things sometimes, but there's some other things that I, I just got to know, especially when we're talking about potential threats. Uh, let's roll potency. Max. So it's probably the, one of the larger groups we've ever seen of this, of this raider camp. Um, Grey Dart, or aka Chaos, says, not noted on the sheet, but I have persuasion, if relevant. Persuasion. Did I, did I miss that? Let me see. Damn. Persuasion. Yeah, you have projectile weapons. Um, I definitely remember persuasion. I definitely remember that. Um, what was the other thing you had? Grey Dart. Where's Grey Dart at? Oh. I, I didn't get your 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 second two of it. You only have one ability. We gotta roll you another one. Um, we'll we'll do we'll do that. We'll do that because everybody has three ability now. So you'll you'll still need a third ability. Um, I'll roll that when I roll. When I roll, uh, Chris Johnson, stranger. Quick fun thought: since Speaker Dawn is a culture seeker, right? Maybe he keeps journals about the people in his travels and collects such journals from other people so like a raider like a raider's journal that would be some motivation as to why you would want to stop here like some kind of tourist attraction right i like that idea keep that in mind for role playing uh varium gray but yeah i like those i like the idea of uh that, that you keep a journal keep that in mind and remember that so we approach you know we approach is there anybody that that meets us as we as we approach uh, i'm gonna say very likely. Yes. Yes. Uh, is it? Is it? Uh. Is it? Is it more than one person? I'm gonna say. I'm gonna say very likely. Yeah. Is it hostile? Uh, I'm gonna say. Uh. Somewhat. I'm. I'm gonna say fifty-fifty. Actually, let me use black magic for my odds. I like to use black magic. Um. Is it hostile? Fifty-fifty. Yes. All right. So, you know, we're approaching and they. As they should, they see us coming. We, we are met by a, a small group and, you know, they have their weapons drawn and they're asking us, you know, who goes there? You know, who goes there? And I would like to think that we are honest with them. We're looking for a place to uh, relax and settle down. Let's say they were a little rowdy. You know, it's, it's, y'all look like some cool people uh, to, you know, to hang with a little bit, you know, chill out. You know, y'all got y'all got some some ale flying around here. Or are they like are they drinking and rowdy and stuff? I'm going to say very likely. Yeah, y'all got some. Look, we're looking to party, too. We just, you know, chaos. Uh, Gray Dart says chaos says we're looking for a group to raid with. <laughs> we want to raid some, uh, you know, some 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 ale canisters is what we want to raid varium gray says hi i was just thinking of the word rowdy you know, this is a rowdy group you know y'all look like y'all just got back from a raid and are celebrating are they are they celebrating from uh looks like they're celebrating right very likely yeah definitely they're celebrating we just want to celebrate as well we got back from a raid it was kind of a raid <laughs> everyone who was there it was we got raid we got we it was kind of a raid um and I think chaos, obviously, because he is really good with words. But let's see, is there anything else that could justify potentially us getting a bonus to this attempt at persuading? Um, who's going to be helping chaos? Is there any skill here that we could justify giving a bonus to chaos is persuasion? I'm going to say very. It, that's a good one. That's a good one. Infiltration. That's a form of infiltration. Do they have animals? Do they have look like they have things that they ride on? I'm going to say uh, 50 50. Yes. NPC action, vengeance slash illusions. 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 
so you know as we're as we're saying like hey you know we see y'all just got back from a raid you know we were just we just got back from a raid we want to party like they cut us off okay they cut us off and they say yeah we look happy but we just avenged someone's you know one of our brothers or sisters we avenged them you know someone we, we had a they say something along the lines of we had a great loss and we just sought vengeance and we got it you know we're celebrating but no that's not necessary he says it they say it in a way like yeah we're there's a reason we're this you know we're happy at the end of the day we're still raiders we're still refugees we're not really looking to party you know there's a reason for this you know it's like if maybe one of your boys got back from jail and you're you're celebrating on the front lawn you're celebrating for a reason you know maybe somebody a friend of yours recently got killed and i don't know but it's it's, it's kind of a, a sad thing as well um, but I, that's what they interrupt. That's what they say. So we're really going to need to get a successful persuasion check because I don't know if they are uh, really open to us joining them for these reasons. But we had to we're going to have to figure something out because the reason we're here is because there's something that's going to happen that involves a species and some little some little inside fighting that, that, they, that they have going on. Um, so back to my uh, train of thought do they, they do have things that ride and to Misha's point the reason I had asked that question is because that's that's the way that we can relate to them Storm Storm McKnight has um, she's good at riding maybe she can teach them something or learn something for them or even start a conversation more so once we're in there but we do have infiltration from from Storm so what we're going to do here what we're going to do here is we're going to see if Varian Gray knows anything cultural from a cultural standpoint that can give us a one up on helping them and you know welcome us in with open arms and when he figures out what that is we're going to combine that with storm storm mcknight's ability of infiltration where we're going to take that knowledge and we're going to we're going to fashion that into uh we're going to be, be crafty thanks to her we're going to fashion that into a way that we can get in does that make sense so let's let's go ahead and, and see how this plays out here with Varium Gray's high intelligence I'm going to give him a plus one rank shift because he, success he obviously knows about these groups now it's just a matter of does the book go into more detail about them it probably does so I'm going to give him a plus one rank shift again versus low uh, of this skill check is he able to find anything in that book is there anything in that book that he's able to find that can give us a one up on getting them to uh, accept some strangers, because remember we're strangers; they never seen us before, and 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 being welcomed in. High versus low. Let's get it. Yo, that was almost an exceptional yes. <laughs> that that's a good roll. That was almost an exceptional yes. And I want y'all to know whenever you are, whenever you are the reason we can progress in the storyline, I'm going to ask the game if you get any kind of uh, if you're able to advance the skills that you're using. Um, and of course, if there's opportunities to reward y'all with something, I'm going to do that as well. But uh, we he Varium Gray is able to find something uh, that can help us. In fact, Varium Gray probably. You know, he probably whispers over to Storm McKnight. Let's figure out what it is that what is this cultural fact? What is this cultural fact about these uh, these raiders that help us get in there? I'm going to go ahead and ask the question. Adjourn slash fame. So what I'm interpreting is you know he learns and he reads that something along the lines of this group you know hands down belief and they've been quoted saying this hands down like there's no we don't even need to talk about this anymore like hands down meeting over court adjourned we are the we are the the most famous raiders in this bitch like we are the raiders the faction this particular cell in this area so they believe that they are legendary i mean are they legendary you know is is that true or are they boasting 
with Varium Gray's knowledge. History. Are they just boasting? Actually, I'm gonna roll this. I'm gonna roll odds. Like I'm asking the meta now. Like, is this really a, f a famous group? I'm gonna. Uh, I'm gonna say 50/50. I'm okay. With, I'm, I like the idea of that. I'm gonna say 50/50. Uh, that was an accidental roll. Um, I'm gonna say 50/50. Are they in that? Are you know? Is is that the case here? Yes, that is the case. NPC negative. Separate slash wounds. Okay, so, you know, as we're talking, there's somebody off in the distance that's screaming. There's people carrying him because his leg got cut off and he's screaming. Ah! He's, you know, his leg got separated from his body because ah! ah! they just got back. There's still people that are rowdy. That goes to show you what kind of group this is. You know, they're so rowdy that you got people over here that got their legs separated from their body. They're still partying, you know, like, like, a, like a Travis Scott uh, concert. Barium Gray says so it's a question or whether we show respect or whether we bo uh boost their ego since they are since you know yeah i agree i agree that fact means that we're gonna have to go about this a certain way since they believe that they're so good but and they are and they are but we're gonna have to kind of stroke we're gonna have to stroke that ego a little bit here um if we're gonna really get in with these folks um and I think that that kind of is going to be along the lines of what Storm McKnight says as well. So with Storm McKnight's high infiltration ability, is she able to fashion this knowledge that we, you know, this is synergy we're talking about. Is she able to fashion this knowledge into a method of infiltration um, to get into this group here uh, and, and approach? I like the I like the infiltration idea. Um I'm going to say the difficulty of that for her is probably probably easy. So high versus low. Is she able to do something with that? Indeed. Indeed. So between between Varium Gray and um Varium Gray and Storm McKnight, you know, they come up with something so fast that the Raiders didn't even really see it. It ain't like we're in there in the background huddling. Like, you know, we're so in tune with each other that you know maybe a couple eye looks a couple stares and a couple nods and and then they, they tap chaos on the on the shoulder and chaos he you know he's already on the same page he's like i got this so chaos with upper high persuasion is chaos able to persuade them to let us passerbys join them for the night i'm gonna say the difficulty of that is uh Is this is this person a little is this person already a little drunk? Very unlikely, because if he's on guard, it's probably not drinking. Is this person but they're raiders, right? Uh unlikely. Is this person drinking? Are they a little are they a little buzzed? You know, when you're buzzed, you might let anybody, you know, come in and hang out. Is this person drinking? They're drinking. They're drinking. So with it, I'm gonna say the difficulty of this is going to be um I'm gonna be I'm gonna say this is average because I want there to be some difficulty there. I'm going to say it, they'll get a penalty of one because they're drunk. Now, actually, I'm going to I'm going to give us a bonus because they're drunk because this is persuasion. So high persuasion plus I'm going to say I'm going to say plus two. I'm going to say plus two from the combination of Varium Gray and uh, Storm McKnight's expertise with a plus three because they're drunk. Is, is, is chaos able to persuade with with his silver tongue his snake tongue is he able to persuade them is he able to persuade them for us to join it's a lot of us salute to the salute to the to the strangers in the chat it's, it's a whole five it's, it's five of us all right Let's roll. Let's see. Here we go. All right, here we go. For real, for real. Five, four, three, two, one. Yes. 
Chaos steps in front of the party and approaches the raider while assuming a submissive, non-threatening posture. Hands up and leading with all the right things one would say to appease the ego of the brute. Using what we now know of their culture, Chaos speaks of celebration, praise, and condolences, as well as what an honor it would be to console their people during a dark time. But we're in, all right? So they let us in, all right? We're going to the next scene. We're joining, we're actually coming and arriving to their, their settlement, their little party. I'm gonna roll the scene. What I'm expecting is people partying, some rowdy, some really crazy rowdy things going on is what I'm expecting. And that we are accepted into the group. There might be some people looking at us, but be, you know, because we were brought there and we're not, you know, we're kind of deep because we were brought there. I don't know if we were going to get a lot of evil looks, but that's what I'm expecting. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to roll for the scene. Just so you, if you don't know, when you're when you roll for the scene, that is there's a possibility, there's a slight chance that something can change. It can slightly be different than what you're expecting or something can interrupt the scene and be totally different. You know, it, shit can go from zero to 100. Let's see. Is, is that is that what we're seeing here? Altered scene. OK, so something changes, something changes, something about what I just was said I was expecting is altered a little bit for the sake of keeping us back here i'm going to ask the question does whatever's different about this scene have anything to do with the species and the and, and, and the sole point of this storyline i'm going to say very likely yes and all right it definitely does it definitely does i'm going to go ahead i'm going to roll a plot point to see why what, what that is lose 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 is this a lose lose for us 50 50 no and event lie slash art event slash event lie slash art okay so <clears throat> this is a lose lose for them and that makes sense because they have they have they're the ones that have the issue it's an internal thing and, you know, there are people partying, there are people looking at us, but what the alternative event is, there is a large group of people who are, who are fighting. They are, uh, are they are arguing among one another. Uh, someone's lying. And whoever is lying, they are really good at it. You know, that they've been able to carry on with this this ruse for for quite a while in fact this ruse that involves this species is why that person died and why they had to get vengeance and they're discovering that whatever they just did and are celebrating they're they've discovered or are potentially thinking that that may not have been the solution someone died for nothing they avenged someone, but they have the wrong person because there's still signs of whatever it is happening. Or they're still a part of the group that believes that what they just did wasn't the right answer. There is they believe that there is someone in the group. Um, there is something else going on. And whoever it is, they're lying about it. They are they are an artful lie. And is, is and they have they're slowly this group is getting smaller and smaller because whatever's going on with this species, it's taking, it's picking people off one at a, it's, you know, one at a time, groups at a time. And every time they think they have a solution and they go to war or they go to do something and they come back, it happens again. So whatever the species is, it, it's, it's, they're, they're fighting about it. V Virium Gray says, did a member of this other species, spe spe species, species infiltrate these raiders and that's another thing very great because I, I was thinking what if this this raider group was the species but we didn't go that direction but this species could be an intelligent species uh that our people are dealing with so when it comes to races and species in this world i decided that every race every single person is going to look totally different unless they have offspring Okay, for the most part, everyone's going to look totally 
different. Everyone is their own creature. Right. Unless you are uh, have a, you are a species, you have a family, you have offspring. So I, I just want to. Differentiate a species, which is going to be creatures. Animals, monsters, da, 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 that are not particularly NPC strangers. And there, and there could absolutely be other species that are intelligent enough um, to be raiding these people. I like the idea that this is potentially a intelligent species that's becoming an issue, right? I like the idea that rainy day, uh, you know, something along the lines of a shapeshifter that causes internal chaos, right? Maybe that's the liar, you know? Um, <clears throat> Very gray. So when we say species in this context, we mean monsters, not peoples. In this context, I'm leaning towards this. I'm leaning towards that, you know, in the context of what we wrote. Yeah, species. Species. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, chaos. A spiritual parasite. Spiritual parasite. Damn. I mean, I'm going for dark. But I think the way I want to encounter this this create this species, I want us to figure that out as we approach it. I could just roll it now, but this is almost kind of like a mystery. And remember, the theme is social, right? So I think there should be some. I want to leave room for us to encounter and discover this thing by way of, you know, socializing. So this is what we're about to do. This is what's about to happen. <laughs> I'm thinking of this on the top. Varium Grace says, let's mill about it. Let's mill about and talk to the Raiders, see what their troubles are. This is how we're going to do that, Varium Gray. This story is going to consist of it's four of us. Five of us. I'm write this down. Five of us. We're not going to split up. We're going to be close in proximity. It's not that big of a camp. But each of us are going to have an experience within this raider camp in this party and each individual side in, in our own silos we're going to have an experience we're going to start with each person and your goal and our goal is to learn something about these people and 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 as well as potentially figuring out what's going on with this species this issue that they're having and then we're going to commute. We're going to congregate after all of us had our experiences. Now, if anything goes wrong and shit goes down, of course, we're all going to help. OK. But I want each of our characters to experience something with this group and walk away with an experience. That's what every session I want in this game. And I also want to encourage the players who are here live watching. Similar to what Varium Gray said, you know, he has a he has a side quest and that's to get journals, collect journals from various cultures. I encourage anyone who's watching right now who has a character to think of something that you could potentially do. I'm going to start off with me first and then we're going to go down. I'm going to, I, th I think I'll uh, roll to see who goes next. So we're going to split up. I want everyone to, to, to imagine that we've been here. We're, we're talking. You know, they're fighting over there. They're arguing. And, you know, there's conversations happening here and there. And there's drinks going around. Um, I'm also going to roll in each in each instance. Like these are going to be like little these little little mini segments. But I'm also going to roll um, to see how intoxicated, how intoxicated uh, we are getting because this group is also shoving out, you know, a drink. We don't know what this drink is. In fact, I want to do some lore building as well. We're going to invent, a, we're going to, we're going to create a drink today. And each person as they, in their little mini adventure, their little mini segment, we're going to roll to see if they're getting more and more intoxicated. And the more and more intoxicated you get, we're going to roll that against your toughness everybody has average toughness unless you're one of your skills or one of your three abilities is governed by that then you have you know above average toughness i don't i don't know if anyone here has toughness or has a skill that would justify them having a bonus in toughness 
if you can justify that sure would love to hear that because we're going to roll an alcohol we're going to roll against your uh constitute your 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 toughness with this drink and if you fail it's going to make your skills um you're going to get some you're going to get some penalties to certain uh social exercises Great Dart leads our party into their encampment of rowdy and barbaric desert dwellers bound in salvaged gear with crude weaponry on their waists, some brandishing both mug and dangerous tool in hand, recklessly. So let's start off with me first. As a matter of fact, yeah, so we're going we're to dev, we're going to go around, we're going to go around, all right? So I go off, I go off. Remember, I, my person, you know, my stranger, I am a weaponsmith. Oh, I'm a weaponsmith, right? But I also am a weapon empath. I rolled em empathy and I got specific and said that I'm going to tie it to weaponsmithing and say that I have a connection with with um, the weapons that I forge, a connection that goes further beyond the fire. OK, and the hammer and tongs. You know, this is a uh, this could be a, a spiritual or, or it could all be in my head and my guy's crazy, but there's something there and it works to my benefit. It would, even if it's, you know, a person with a stuffed animal who thinks a stuffed animal talks to them, the stuffed animal don't talk to them. It still instills confidence. So I'm not trying to say my character is loony, <laughs> but it may be perceived that way, because remember, abilities and skills are not I want to I want to ground them. You know what I mean? Um, sort of not powers because we're going to get powers. Whatever is influencing us in this world can give us powers and stuff. But starting off is just skills. So I have uh, I'm, I'm quite empathic with weapons or the, the art and the, the craft of making them and you know, these connections. Um, so that is a conversation point. So what's going to happen is. I'm going to roll a. I'm going to roll a theme for each of these little individual um, one on one set uh, these little individual experiences, starting with my character and the theme of mine. What's going to happen is uh, personal. OK, so it's something personal It has to do with either me or, or it's me. Personal is always something that has to do with the character personally. Um, and I'm going to roll a plot line. Oh, wait, wrong button. Plot point. Suspicion. Perfect. Perfect. So is am I encountering something that uh, I feel immediately off the rip is uh, suspicious and, and it has something to do with. With uh, what we are here for, I'm going to say likely. Yes, and it's incredibly suspicious. Hmm. Suspicious. How? waste slash animals is there somebody doing something i feel is odd for this type of group like is this person doing something so di like something that just don't seem right very likely yes but uh yes but no one's paying attention to them which is why they're doing it um, they're being they're trying to be discreet about it. So I'm I'm off somewhere drinking and, and, and reveling. And I and I and I uh, I see this person coming out of one of the tents with a bag of what looks like bloody uh, a bag. Uh, looks like it could potentially be carrying a, a corpse and maybe some sort of creature uh, body part that's, that's hanging out of it. And this person looks suspicious as hell when they're when they're leaving the tent. They look suspicious as hell. When they're leaving the tent, um, I begin to relax a bit and start to enjoy myself. These desert clansmen were as savage, yet welcoming as Varium Gray said they were. Blindly gulping down whatever was given to me, I free my inhibitions, but still attempt to learn more about their plight, as well as what's leading to their infighting. And suddenly, I briefly lock eyes with the suspicious clansmen who I see attempting to lurk about beyond the tents, their arms bearing a dead, nondescript animal bound in bloody cloth. The clansman sees me, 
and suspiciously begins to walk away from the celebration of death and vengeance. I'm going to go. I'm not going to get close, but I'm going to kind of try to parallel, walk parallel to them to see where they take the body. I'm going to tail them a little bit while, you know, playing, uh, while reveling and, 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 and milling about. I'm, I even bump into uh, one of y'all. I bump into Green Green while he's, while you know, while Green Green is socializing. But my goal is to keep an eye on this person. Am I... Am I able to, you know, to tell them? Am I able to, to uh, do I lose them in the, in the crowd? I'm trying to think of how I should do this. Um, I'm going to do odds. I'm going to do odds because I'm not, I'm not trying to pr like professionally like stalk them. I'm just, you know, about, you know, you see, everybody sees me, but I'm watching. I don't, they don't know if I'm watching them or not. So am I able to, you know, keep an eye on this person? I'm going to say, I mean, I should, right? Let me go ahead and roll. <laughs> I'm, you know, someone, you know, when I bump into green, 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 green turns around and is like, yo, da, da, da. And whoever he with is like, you know, you know, holds up a mug of something and forces me to drink it. Uh, I'm going to drink it, not really knowing what it is yet. Um, and I'm going to roll against my, my, uh, there's a whole scene going on in my head. I hope it's going on in your head, too. If you have any questions, let me know. Is this stuff really, like, hardcore? I'm going to say very likely. Yeah. Yeah. So it's going to be... <laughs> These are raiders. They're drinking some high. They're drinking some high-powered stuff here. It's going to be high uh, versus my average, we'll say, um, willpower, my average willpower. I take a drink of this stuff. Does it, you know, it's it's obviously having an impact, but is it like having an impact impact on me? Let's see. High versus average. Oh, I almost beat it. Yeah, it's having an impact on me. All right. So the question is, was I able to um, successfully tell this person? Was I able to successfully tell this person? I'm going to say with uh, now that I've been slightly, I'm a little, I'm a little intoxicated, not super intoxicated, not super intoxicated. Um, unless there's side effects to this drink. Are there any side effects to this drink? Other than the normal intoxication, like, you know, or do you go blind? <laughs> Are there any side effects for the sake of fun? I'm going to say likely. Yes, there's side effects. Do these side effects impair, um, impair my, uh, impair my awareness? I'm going to say, uh, 50 50 and if it's a no it's going to be a really weird side effect that is just weird does it impair me i'm going to say 50 50 yes okay does it impair my like my, my vision likely yeah all right, so things, you know, it's a little bumpy. It's a little bumpy. Am I able to successfully uh, see where this person goes? I'm going to say um, and track this person. Uh, I'm, I'm, and I'm, I'm thinking it's nighttime. I'm thinking it's nighttime. Uh, I'm going to say I'm going to say 50 50. Am I able to track? Am I able to track them? No. All right. So in the crowd, I, I lose this person, but I definitely saw a really, really shady, shady person. OK. I'm going to wrap my little my, my little experience up, but on a fun note, something happens, something else happens just for fun. Something else happens. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and roll to interpret what it is. This is something that is 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 funny. It's like it's something that happens with with me in this group um, of rowdy of rowdy uh, raiders. Something happens. And, and what exactly happens if you're in the chat? Um, definitely want your input on this. Help me interpret what it is 
that is uh, is happening. That's just something fun, just some flavor, just some flavor. Um, Rainy Day says, is there something mixed in their drink? Possibly. Possibly. I don't know if there's anything in there that would make, I don't know if it's to the point where I would like ax. Like, I don't know how obvious it is. Is it really obvious that something's mixed in the drink? Because if it's obvious, obvious, then I might ask like, yo, what's in here? Is it obvious, obvious that there's something mixed in the drink? Uh, let me roll my perception to see if I, if I notice anything, uh, anything mixed in the drink. My perception is intuition. I definitely have a plus one intuition because of my empathy. So my above average empathy, I mean, my above average intuition, when I drunk that, when I drunk whatever this was, and we're going to build it eventually, when I drunk that, um, did I notice any, was it, did I notice anything that would make me bid the question? Is this something, something mixed in here? Uh, I'm going to say the difficulty of me knowing, uh, paying attention or picking up on that, I'm going to say is high, above average versus high. Exceptional, yes. So when I take a drink of that, and that shit hits me and but makes my vision all blurry, which is the reason I lost track of them. That makes me be like, I look at it. What does it look? I immediately look at it. <clears throat> what is it? What is it? How would you, how would we describe what it is that I see? Adventurously empty. Whatever it is. Whatever it is, th there's a lot. There's a lot of it. There's a lot of it, and uh, adventurers are known to take it because it's probably it's probably in abundance. Whatever it is, uh, adventurers. It's in. It's 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 known to be carried by adventurers. Um, it's easy to carry. It's, maybe it's not as dense. It's not heavy for some reason, and uh, maybe that's why uh, it's 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 adventure, and and, and that's why. Yeah, we have empty here because it's light. It's a light uh, liquid. Um, I'm even going to say that it's somewhat transparent. It's somewhat. Um, I'm, I'm, what's that word? It's it's, it's clear. Uh, Chaos says the mug looks like a bottomless pit, a void of despair. I like that better. So. It looks very emptiness. You know, this is, uh, it's nighttime. It does look like an empty bottomless cup. It's very light. The shit looks empty. It's just like it's just filled with darkness. In fact, you can't drink this shit during the daytime. You can only drink this at nighttime because when the sunlight hits it, it disappears. <laughs> this is a nighttime beverage only. And when it's night and you're drinking it, it's as deep as is it's as deep as night is long because you can only drink it when it's nighttime boy that's a nice little tagline to that chaos whatever this is it looks like a bottomless pit a void of despair and it's like drinking nothing at, but it hits you hard we'll learn the next fact about this beverage on the next person so something is happening something is happening what is it that's happening that's you know it's just flavor it's fun chat let me know what happens violate slash weapons violate slash weapons i'm gonna roll another one i have an idea what i think is happening i'm gonna mix that with whatever y'all say and this is happening right after i lose sight of my my uh you know, the person I'm stalking, you know, I drink it. I drink that void drink, that, that void berry juice. I'm following homie. I drink that void berry juice and that drone hit me. You ever watch an anime when someone, something happens to them, like in, internally, like they, like a heart attack. Like remember when Goku had the viral heart disease and whenever that drone would tick, it would be like, boom, boom. And it's like really dramatic. And it's like, it's, it's, it's. when I drink that void berry juice. It hits me like, doo -doo, I'm like uh, uh, uh. <laughs> uh, uh. 
Chris Johnson spilling a drink is a serious offense. A fight ensues. Oh shit. Hey, it's my violated. They spilled the void berry juice? They spilled the void berry juice. You can't do that. It's nighttime. It's, you're supposed to be drinking that. You had all day to spill the void, void, the void berry juice. And you want to drop it at the only time we can drink it? Off with his head, right? So weapons are coming out, right? Somebody violated. Somebody violated. I'm going to roll to see if it was one of us. Matter of fact, I'm going to make every person roll a uh, <laughs> dexterity check. Uh, uh, agility everyone's gonna we're gonna do a agility check on everyone to make sure not it was it wasn't any of us that spilled the, the juice <laughs> oh crap sorry guys oh misha are you saying that there's this is like a potential another potential side effect like a memory like it kind of like it kind of like uh affects your memory because i mean we're just chilling we're just drinking right like this is a this is the preferred drink this is a preferred drink during when you're when you're celebrating because you for you it, you know you if you came back from like a crazy fight a slaughter you lost you lost fellow warriors like you don't want to think about fighting you don't want to think about war you don't want to think about how you could have saved a friend that you just lost in battle so that's why this beverage is preferred amongst adventurers especially hard warriors because it kind of helps them forget a little bit kind of helps them forget a little bit and uh and that's why people drink it i don't know that sounds dangerous i don't i don't know if i would drink it i guess i already drunk it is that what's is that is that is that what's happening here is this is is what is what is what misha's saying is that is that what's happening <laughs> is this is void berry let me write this down real quick just in case i say yes is void berry a thing are we making that canon and does it make you forget is there a void berry in here? I'm gonna say I'm gonna say somewhat likely. Yes, plus event slash inspect the spiritual. <laughs> so yeah, there's some void berry in there, and you know, to the point where I I, I wanted to. I, I wish I had power. I wish I had you know ace the DM here to maybe see if there's any kind of like spiritual nature stuff in this drink because it feels weird and it's uh, for some reason I'm forgetting how uh to swing a blade so yeah we'll go with that void berry is a thing now i was just saying it <laughs> but i like the idea of void berry void berry forget we'll say you know uh suppresses or numbs memory of combat skills yo I, you can't be yo rainy, rainy day can you imagine drinking a drink that you know is going to make you forget how to fight and then being paranoid on top of that? Is paranoia a rare side effect of the void berry that happens amongst people? I got friends who, you know, they can't do certain things because it affects them a lot differently than most people. Is that what's going on here? Is there a super, super side effect that's rare that makes you also paranoid? I'm going to say, uh, uh, very i'm gonna say very unlikely no no thank god thank god misha says maybe this is why they let y'all drink nobody can fight with deadly force uh, that makes sense that makes sense very uh appropriate for a social themed story too right let's start with chaos um well, Yeah, you can pretend. Yeah, you can only pretend to drink. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, we're gonna roll a. Do you do you have any kind of stealth, or 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 you just you know just trying to? Do you have a? Uh, can you justify getting any benefits to this 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 uh, attempt at deceiving? I feel like you would probably have an easier time persuading them to persuading them to um did you did chaos successfully pers uh talk someone into uh not giving them a drink 
I'm going to say the difficulty of that, just knowing that the reason they want us to drink is for everything we just learned. Um, and remember, we're ego stroking here. I'm going to say the difficulty of that is going to be exceptional. Exceptional. That's like the king offering you a drink and you're like, nah. But they're probably not that smart, right? So I'm going to give them a penalty of two uh, because they're they're not that smart and they're drinking. So high versus exceptional minus two, which is almost a, it's pretty much above average. So high versus exceptional minus two. Are you able to successfully persuade them into uh, not even giving you the drink? Exceptional, yes. Yo, Chaos, what do you say? What what do you say to them uh, that uh, just just gets you out of needing to drink the Voidberry brew? <laughs> without without uh, obviously offending them, which is why this is really big. Because you were, I was going to actually prepare to see if you offended them somehow but i think with an exceptional yes whatever you said they're like oh okay <laughs> oh you like you say y'all the way my the way my tongue is the way my tongue works it's not able to and i don't want y'all to waste you know because the, the way my, he says i fear i'm not man enough to handle it like them <laughs> I like that. I like that. I like that. I like that. And uh, and what do they what do they say? Postpone slash attention. So they postpone giving you a drink, right? They postpone giving you a drink. All the attention is on them. You stroke their ego. They like, yeah. I, I mean, you know, I am. You know, I am a little. I'm, I'm much, yeah, yeah. Somebody give me another drink. They get a little bit more drunker, right? Let's remember that when we come to you for your little experience. Yeah, go one. Go one, go one. Uh, green, green, your turn. Green, green drinks it. Uh, so green, let me see here. Green, green, you have, uh, I'm socially awkward. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm socially awkward, so I probably, so I'd probably let peer pressure do it. Okay, yes, yeah, a good point. Your character's personality. Good call. Good call. Um, so you take a you take a drink. Does it impact you? Ah, oh, y'all couldn't see that. That was a no. You take a drink, but it hasn't really hit you yet. Okay, who else we got here? Okay. All right, so let's let's move over to since we're since let's get over to chaos since that that flourish that he just had. You know, chaos is with another group. Someone that he just, you know, stroke their ego a little bit. You're trying to figure out, and you're the one with the persuasion, so I'm really hoping for a W here, but you're trying to figure out something that's going on with this group uh, that involves the thing with the species, right? So what's going on in your, in your situation? Action. Mass battle. Okay, so... You know, you're over here with this group and that dude that you pumped up, right? That dude that you just find a drink from and he was like, oh, yeah, you're right. I am. You know, you're not you're not as you're not as awesome and brave and, 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 and beast mode as me. Let me tell you about this this one time <laughs> and this person, you know, this one of this raider goes on and on about this mass battle that they were in. And he's like he's a little he's intoxicated very much so. So he's acting it out to the point where you know you almost have to kind of move out of the way because he's swinging his weapon and stuff he's, he's kicking he's you know he's he's drunkenly telling you the story about this mass battle that he had to the point where he comes swinging around with his weapon and you got to move out of the way you got to move out of the way so 
we're going to roll in. We, we got to see if you're able to uh, evade, you know, a couple of these, these swings as he's telling his story. Again, you don't want to fight this person. You don't want to offend this person. You're just we're all just trying to get along with these people and, and leave the, you know, um, leave with our heads. So this person, you know, they're talking to you. They start swinging. Of course, very drunk, but you know, the Raiders they take hits, they always hit each other all the time. That doesn't necessarily mean you're built like that. So, he's trying to hit you not to kill you, but more so, you know, to show you how intense this battle was. And what better way to show that than by tapping you a little bit? So, he's gonna swing, he's very uncoordinated and uh, drunk. He's gonna swing with a, uh, I'm gonna say, a, a below average. <laughs> Varium Grace says, if I'm nearby, you bet I'm recording that tale mentally so I can transcribe it late, later. Okay. Okay, I'm going to roll some details for that, too. I'm going to roll some details for that just to have something to build. He swings. He swings uh, clumsily uh, at, at, uh, at Chaos, a.k.a. Grey Dart. I would like to think Chaos saw it coming because he's telling a story, right? He told you what he did before he actually acted it out. He's a little delayed with his actions. So I'm going to give, I'm going to give Great Dart a plus two to his agility and evading uh, this. Uh, he's, a, he's a raider. He's, a, he's, he's still kind of nice. He's still kind of fast, still kind of nice. Just going to give you a plus one. So the raider swings. As he's telling his drunken story, does it? Does it hit? Does it hit you? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, um, I'm going to say, is, is this person carrying a, was it, I mean, was it with a weapon or more so like, uh, like, a unarmed? Was this person carrying a weapon? 50-50. Yes. So he hits. We're going to say it's like a... It's like a... It's an axe. Is it an axe? So Axe-like weapon? Likely. Yes. NPC action. Communicate slash representative. NPC action. Communicate slash a representative. So as he's swinging around, there's another person that's kind of like co-signing and, and telling the story along with him. Like, yeah, I was there. And remember the monster, when you swung at him like that, the monster was on the side. And remember, you cleaved the monster as well. You know what I'm talking about? And somebody's like, no, what do you mean? What are you talking about? Like, can you show me? And he's like, OK, so it was like this. Remember, they're all drunk. He was like this. So I w he stands next to chaos. He's like, I was the monster was right here. And then he came and he was, he, you know, he's so brave and mighty. He came and he just cleaved the entire group. And that's when he like swings and chaos. He hits chaos. We're going to say it's uh, uh, it's it's above average damage. It's above average uh, strength versus um, your, your toughness. Your toughness is average. Does this hurt above average versus average? Does this hurt? Yes. Yeah, so I'm going to say that he, you know, he hits you in the, in, the, in the upper abdomen area, not your head, nowhere, but he comes across the middle of your of your body. Maybe you weren't expecting it. You kind of move out of the way, but he, he gets you right. And he knocks you into um, another person and it hurt. It hurt. It was unarmed. Um, it wasn't it was it was uh, the, the flat of the axe. This or, or maybe it wasn't does does it. Does it, um, yeah, it was, it was the flat of the ax. Was it the flat of the ax? He's drunk. Was it the flat of the ax? I'm going to, I'm going to say, uh, likely if it wasn't the flat of the ax, we're going to, we're going to see if, if, if it really does a lot of damage, it, you'll, you'll be okay. This is a social, this is a, this is a story and you know, no one's going to die. Right. We'll see what the meta black says. Was it the flat of the ax? Likely.
I mean, things things get a little out of hand, right? Things get out of hand sometimes. Um, it nicks you a little bit. It nicks you a little bit. Does usually when you succumb to wounds, you pass out, right? This is going to be a wound. We're going to see if you if, if it's enough to make you pass out. Do you succumb to the You're not going to die. Do you succumb to the wounds? Above average. This is an above, above, above average damage. We're, we're now rolling it against your toughness to see it's, if it's something that's going to put you down for, you know, a little bit. Do you succumb to, the, to this accidental wound? No. It does hurt. You do have a wound on the abdomen area knocks you around a little bit into the other guy uh but you're okay but you did you do have a, a a little you do have a little gash and it was an accident it was an accident do they do they react to the accident at all or they you know because i imagine that they're still kind of like and then, I, and then i went like this do they react to the to the wound at all i'm gonna i'm gonna say um i'm gonna say likely yeah yeah so he probably doesn't like continue on right very likely yeah he doesn't he, he doesn't from this experience do you learn anything about their their situation with this species i'm going to say very unlikely definitely not so i think this is a good opportunity for you know ha ha showing some humility showing you know not only streaking this person's ego but they actually were able to get a hit on them they were able to share a great story to chaos um you know at chaos's expense i think this is an opportunity for chaos to ask a question about what's going on you know let's say this story that he was talking about involved this in, involved something that had to do with this species with a persuasion i'm going to have chaos ask the question about what's going on and here's, you know, he's going to say something along the lines of, you know, or if you're, you know, along, he's going to start a conversation to pretty much talking about, you know, you seem pretty mighty. What's this infighting going on uh, in your, in your clan here? With a persuasion, with a persuasive sheen on the way he's talking to kind of get this person to, uh, to get information from this this person's lips uh i'm gonna say hi versus i mean i feel like this person is this this person definitely respects and likes chaos uh now so i'm gonna say the difficulty of this is going to be low with a with a minus with a minus one When did all this start going wrong? When did all this start going wrong? Does the person answer? Does the person give us some answers? Yes. And what does this raider say? Attach slash goals. So there's something about this, whatever this species is and, and, and people are, are, are dying and being uh, attacked by it. Up until recently, they were just, you know, living their life a certain way. And then someone got the idea of making their goal to hunt this species. Is that what's happening here? Is this was there a goal, a new goal, a new initiative, a new endeavor for the Raiders to potentially make some more money by attacking a particular species? And now it's giving them some trouble. Is that, is that what's happening here? Very likely. Yes, and event slash carelessness slash liberty. The part their leaders, their leaders uh, are kind of forcing this because they feel it would be for the greater group if they are able to get some sort of resource from these creatures that they're hunting. Um, they're they're forcing this so. You know they don't have the liberty of freedom in this in this in, in the say of doing this and that and people are dying because they are losing uh when they are hunting for this creature 
people are dying maybe because of some careless carelessness on the hunter on the raiders part for maybe not going about it the right way maybe not knowing how to fight these things you know kind of reminds me of starship troopers when you know they they had guns but they really didn't know how to you know take care of me you know they had a hard time fighting all those insects on that planet or just one at that you know at minimum one they were having a hard time so i feel like there's a situation here where there's some carelessness carelessness on both sides where you have the graders who are being told to do this they're not that great at it they're having there's casualties and then there's the leaders who are careless because they're sending their people um you know they, they made the goal of hunting these things and it's it's not good for the overall group because it's very dangerous they're not fully equipped um and, and that's what chaos learns uh from this raider that that he's uh getting rowdy with all right so green green we're gonna roll green green you know green green is also in his little you know he's talking he's going about he's learning and you know green green's out and about you know and he's drinking he's being peer pressured um into <clears throat> drinking you know these people are very brunt very very blunt very forward uh we're gonna roll versus green green's willpower so we're gonna do high versus average is green green impacted by the void berry brew oh what no did we already roll that no anyway what's going on with green green what's going on in green green's world personal I swear I just rolled mass battle again okay so we're going to say that green green is with chaos okay and he's listening to the story that this dude is telling him about the battle and um and this is personal so <clears throat> I interpret that as you know when the dude starts talking about their woes and how they're having a hard time with these creatures green greens he starts talking about potentially luring and trapping them as opposed to just going and trying to kill them you know these are raiders they probably aren't they probably don't have too many techniques up their sleeve but green green as we know he is really he's the master of of, of trapping and luring so he makes the suggestion and you know i would even go as far as sharing a few tips on how to potentially you know how to uh take care of these dealing with these uh the, these creatures or whatever the you know the species is um it and I, i'm going to say that they're at that moment to to almost represent that other side of the argument that we had mentioned when we rolled with the stories about to begin with the leaders want that there's people in the in the fat in the in the group in the faction that don't want that Green Green is offering an alternative here, a way to go about that so that the leaders are, are happy uh, and then the group could potentially survive. Is there a chance that there's somebody in the group that's straight up like that sounds hot, but no, we don't want to we don't want to hunt. We don't want to fight these creatures at all. It's a bad idea. Let's continue doing what we've been doing. There's there's pros to both. But Green Green is offering an alternative here, a method of, you know, so I, I do think there's going to be a, at least some people that's going to be like, no, 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 and, and, and kind of stand on that square. Is there anyone here, though, in the proximity that hears his suggestion and, and kind of attest and uh, objects? I'm going to say, and everyone's drunk, I'm going to say likely. Yes, which is perfect because this theme, this this scene here that's happening with Green Green is a very personal, a very personal scene. And this is an opportunity for Green Green to kind of potentially change someone's mind. This is very personal to him. Um, this person comes and he says something along the lines of no, like it's dangerous. We already lost a lot of people. But the point, the, the point here. And I think, you know what, let's bring Speaker Dawn into this as well. We're going to bring Speaker Dawn into this. Speaker Dawn is also nearby. And Speaker Dawn is going to add or kind of back up Green Green in terms of 
this is how your people has have, have have survived. You survived off and thrived off of being teeny cells, teeny faction, like teeny groups that help each other to survive. And there's a lots of different teeny groups out there. It would be a detriment to to your immediate group if you are to disagree with the leaders. You know it, that could potentially cause a little civil war off of you know just based off of history and how you've all survived up to this point you know and this is speaker dawn dropping some knowledge on on them supporting green green um it might be in your best interest to adopt what green green is teaching you all by chance the person that's that accidentally hurt chaos is this some is this a general someone really important to the group that could have influence on the leaders i'm going to say very likely yes event slash assist slash travel so th i feel like this person is is listening and um assist slash travel you know, he says something along the lines of he starts to agree. He is the one that agrees. The other person disagrees. He agrees because if we can trap these things and keep them alive as opposed to killing them, whatever the species is, they are good at traveling through the desert. And he's thinking, yeah, like if we if we caught them, if we lured them, if we trapped them, they can assist us as we traverse the, you know, the desert. The other person is like, no, that's dangerous. And that's when Speaker Dawn comes and he's and he's saying like, that's you should you should consider that. You don't want there to be a civil war in between the group. And then we're going to we're going to put with the cherry on top after all that great information and the great idea presented by Green, uh, by Green Green, backed up by Speaker Dawn, the cherry on top is going to be chaos using his persuasion to say you know this is what y'all should do so your group is not torn apart by this we understand both sides but listen to your general here these creatures whatever they are can be of great assistance can be of great assistance to y'all um to to uh, the, the greater group can be an asset with a persuasion of high that someone said something uh rainy day says rainy day says are the creatures old allies of the raiders so maybe they had them before these creatures are i'm going to say these creatures are native to this land they only recently encountered these these creatures i'm gonna say to kind of mix it with what you're saying rainy day i'm gonna say that there are raiders out there like these raiders remember they're their own individual cliques that utilize these creatures and that's why the leaders got the idea to begin with because they saw the success that other groups had with these creatures they never really knew how they were able to tame them and so on and so forth and the leader's idea to attack them, to sell them as opposed to using them, it's just a change of it's just a, uh, a difference in philosophy that different raider groups had. So, yes, these these creatures are an ally to other raider groups because they use them. This raider group wanted to be a little bit different and hunt them and poach them um, to make money. So just a little difference in philosophy. So, yeah, we can say that they this creature is an old is an old um, ally of raiders in general. Um, but this particular group wanted to poach them and we're saying it's not a great idea it's not a great idea it's you, you it's probably better to use them very young grace says so what are the creatures i stepped away a second did we decide no we actually did not roll the creatures um yet but we know something about the creatures now and you know we have a little history on these creatures is that they are used by raiders in this area but this specific group wanted to poach them instead they're trying to have they're being killed doing it and uh you know maybe it might be time to change how you know how this group approaches and we're going to see if we're able to convince them because chaos is going to take green and, and speaker dawn's argument and um <clears throat> see if we can kind of get through to them so with a high versus i mean we're going to give us a plus one because it's 
we're gonna give us a plus two. We're gonna give us a plus one because Speaker Dawn um, and Green have a really good point. And we're gonna get another bonus because the general agrees and thinks that that Green Green's idea to lure, trap, and use these creatures as opposed to poaching them is a better idea versus a difficulty of convincing a person that's a raider, that's a drunk, that uh is represents the half of this group that doesn't want to uh fight these things anymore at all and wants to you know bid, bicker with the leaders we're going to say the difficulty of that is above average so it's going to be high plus two versus above average is chaos able to wrap all that up and persuade and convince these people to take green green's method of approach this is big this is big Here we go. Let me clear this out. Here we go. Exceptional no. There's a larger populace here of people who do not want anything to do with these creatures. This person is arguing for the side of the people that want nothing to do with these creatures. They want the leader to stop telling them to go after these creatures, period. Probably because the people that died it impacted, you know, it, it impacted them. Hmm, interesting. Um, Varium graces, so they're probably mounts for the for most raider tribes, but they have valuable mount. They have right, exactly. Successfully poaching them would make this tribe rich, but them at odds with the other raider tribes. That too. All right. So since we weren't able to convince them that luring them is better than killing than poaching them, we weren't able to convince them because people died, and they feel strongly about that. It's dangerous. To, to po try to poach these creatures, but what if we present the I, the thought that yeah, what Speaker Dawn is suggesting is if other raiders use them, and you have a raider group poaching them, and we're all in the same area, that's a problem. That could start a war. More people could die. We're going to try to persuade them with chaos again. I'm going to give us a penalty, though, since we're trying to uh, get through to someone who, again, is drunk and disagreed with us the first time. So it's going to be high. With a with only a bonus of one. Matter of fact, I'm going to get rid of the bonuses entirely. It's just going to be high versus above average. Are we able to get through to them and convince them? that it's also a bad idea because other raider groups are going to have a problem with that. Do we get through to them? Does chaos work his magic? No. No. So what that means is we're going to leave, we're going to keep that in stone. What we're learning from this now is that there is a faction of raiders who are now going to continue to kill this particular species. And what that's going to mean is that's going to have an impact on, in the future. I'm adding every, I'm adding I'm adding these plots. I'm going to have a spot for these plots on the website so that we can remember these things, because I think that's going to contribute to some um, some bigger things in the future. For example, this faction, I think, is going to get smaller and smaller because they're going to get killed by these creatures. But I also think they're going to get there's going to be a war, a raider war with this faction. 
So I'm going to put in, I'm going to put this faction in their situation in one of the plots. Cause I think I'm going to try to tie that back. We're going to, we're going to, I'm going to try to, we're going to, we're going to see again, this is world building. And I think this particular faction can have an impact on the world around us, especially because they're near us. All right. So keep that in mind. But what we just learned here is that we have a faction and a, spe a, a species that are trying to kill each other. OK. When you think about RPG games, video games where you can make decisions. We just failed at convincing a group from trying to kill another group. And it's going to be to their detriment or it's going to be to the species detriment. We'll find that out. OK, so. That argument goes nowhere. That argument goes nowhere. I want to wrap this up with one. On a good note, something that happens with our group, with this fat, with this Raider group, similar to what we did previously. An event's going to happen that's going to end us on a good note. One, two, I want to build this species. I want to roll a few things about this species so I can get it on paper and get it into uh, the world lore. But first, I want to read some of the, com the, the comments that we're getting here. Chaos says, I don't think they care about a civil means. Yeah. Yeah, they're going to they're either going to be killed by the creatures. They're going to die slowly by the creatures. They're going to have a, they're going to implode because they're going to have a civil war. And or be killed by another raider group. We're potentially partying with a, a group who won't be here for long if they continue at this rate. Barry and Grace says, so did they ultimately decide to have nothing to do with the creatures taming or killing? Or did they decide to continue trying to kill the creatures? So the leaders of this, the leaders of this, um, of this raider camp. That because that was the issue to begin with. It was there was a social dilemma, a civil topic in between, like happening within this group. The leaders want them said that our goal now is to poach these creatures. People have been getting killed because these creatures are bodying them. It's not going their way. They might they might are able to recover some resources from this creature, but not enough to uh, justify the losses. Because one of you know, there's a good there's a person with a lot of influence in this group who lost someone and is opposed to poaching them not necessarily because it's wrong but because it's dangerous and so there's a there's a civil war that's happening and we just try to convince them to continue hunting them but not killing them but like trying to you know lure them that's less dangerous and this person is still like no they're they're dangerous hunt, hunt, luring them is dangerous less dangerous but we've already lost enough people we we've already never used this creature other raiders have but we didn't and so we should continue not to because we, obviously we are too ca careless and not equipped to capture or or to you know to deal with these creatures to me it sounds more like they are you know just from from a standpoint of principles they are against it because that was a damn good argument we got some exceptional no's so they are absolutely against it before we end, before we uh, end uh, the experience with the Raiders, I'm going to roll on the creature crafter chart to, to get a few uh, ground features for this, this species that we're going to add to the lore. But first, let me roll on the creature crafter chart. I'm going to go ahead and roll this creature to see what we are dealing with. The one thing that we know so far is that they can be. They can be mounted. D100, 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 D100. All right. So if you see here, I just rolled a five, a 20, a 57, a seven, a 58, and a 96. I'm going to use these numbers. They're going to be important in a second. So, so my first number was five. 
That is an alien class creature. So that is... It's going to be a little bit... Impact, it's going to be pretty uh, great in all aspects of health, speed, defense, and offense. So alien class... Now I want to know its potency. I need to roll a. I need to roll two d10s for that. Uh, instead, I'm just going to roll potency on my RPG solo. Weak. Okay, it makes sense. They're mounts. Well, no, they're being killed by them, right? So, hmm. It's probably weak for a gigantic monster. Or maybe it's weak, but it has some kind of lethal aspect to it, is what I'm going to lean to. So it's a weaker creature, but it has a something it's doing is bodying these raiders. It's something, so let's remember that. There's something dangerous about them. Alright, so it's weak. Let's figure out what the size is. I had a, uh, the next number was a 57. So this creature is human sized, human size. Okay. All right, let's go ahead and roll on the alien table. Let's roll on the alien table here. My next number that I rolled was a seven. So whatever it is, it is stinky. It has a, it has a, it's one of its traits, smelly. The other number I had was a, a, a 58. Insect-like. Insect-like. Stinky. Insect-like. And then my next number was a 96. GM decision. GM decision is, you know, lets me choose whatever I want on this table. I want to roll on the supernatural beast table. Let's add another aspect to this. That's going to be my decision. Let's roll on a supernatural beast table. Spice things up a little bit here. Here we go. Green Green says, is there stink you... Is there stink... Uh, is there stink used in weapons? Is that what they're, is that why they're useful? Hmm. It's definitely a possibility. You know, they're poaching them for a reason, right? I'm going to roll one more D100. Because I want to know, uh. What's going on with the supernatural beast trait? 63. 63. Aquatic. Aquatic. All right, so that's big, y'all. That's big because that means that there's some water around here. And currently, we, we, haven't, we haven't discovered any body of water. There's water around here because that's where these creatures are. That could be why people are dying. Because these raiders are probably not really good at swimming. This is a desert region. That's what it is. It has something to do with water. It's hard for them to... Uh, it's hard for them to capture them because maybe not, nobody in their group can swim. <laughs> and so people are getting bodied because... Uh, is, that, is that the case? Can... can is. Does everybody in this group fail at swimming? Likely. No, that's not, that's not the case. It's not the case. But it does have to do with this creature being an aquatic creature that stinks. Let me write that down real quick. Aquatic. Stinky insect like that's aquatic. But are dangerous. Mm. 
Rainy Day says underground links. Oh, what if it's like quicksand? This is a desert region. It's aquatic because it's like a quicksand and that's why they're dangerous because where they live is very, uh, it, you know, it's quicksand. It, you know, you get pulled under. Remember that dude in the beginning was missing a leg? Quicksand. He sunk in, chopped his leg off. You don't need to be strong. They're, they're weak. Like once you get your hands on them, you know, maybe they're weak in that sense. But once you fall, once you come under that quicksand, say bye bye to whatever pot, body part that is. And, that, and that's why they're dangerous. Let me write that down real quick. Alien, stinky, insect like, aquatic quicksand man this is going to be a this creature first of all this creature sounds terrifying two i don't know if it's worse than the creatures from the last session <laughs> but they both sound pretty terrifying um chris johnson says they are water-based but away from water could be why they are weak from earlier yes exactly that's i like that too i like that as well they are weak when they are out of the wall, when they are out of the quicksand, okay, they're weaker when they're out of the quicksand, um, and maybe that has to do with this. That, that has to do with the success that other groups had. They found a way to get them out of the quicksand and use them, and that's why Green Green idea. That's why his idea was great. Like he he's good at luring and trapping. He'll pull them out of the quicksand for y'all, but they don't want to hear it. But listen, listen. If it ever comes up in an, as an opportunity. You know what? That's going to be that's going to be that's going to be the role playing, the interactive role playing of that opportunity. As I said, in between sessions, I didn't get a chance to do it last week because I said I was tied up. But in between sessions, my goal is to um, also release opportunities for the characters to role play. It's going to be in the form of videos. They're going to be like video prompts. Um, and I'm going to ask for the people to role play as their character in the comment section. And I'm going to also get involved and I'm going to I'm going to I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do something with that with that. But I, I want there to be opportunities for, for characters to role play and really get in character. And I think it would be cool if we potentially. Maybe went and tried to get one of these things for ourselves, because we have green green who if he can if we can pull them out and we can traverse the desert with these creatures that'll be a bonus for us and that'll be something that will be reflected on the, the the meta tower portion of the website it can be a boom um a boom to us um varium gray says water insects evading bad swimmers okay uh water walkers crab people <laughs> varium gray says the sandbar stink too yeah yes that's what made me think of them because those things from the last session also had a smell they smelled i think they smelled good though What's up with this? What's up with these sands and these smelly creatures? Chaos says maybe there is an underground tunnel quicksand system. I like that. I like that. Uh, Gr Varium Gray says green. Get the strangers some quicksand crab mounts. <laughs> so we're, we're thinking crabs. Okay. I mean, crabs, you know, insects of the sea. Crab like. Ugh. underground quicksand tunneling says yo chris johnson good call on it i like that that's why they're weak when they're when they're out of the water out of the quicksand um man these creatures sound crazy i want there to be a uh something that brings this all to a close i feel like we had a good experience with these raiders it's a shame that they they have a troubling future it's a shame because I actually I like them. I you know, even though they 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 kind of banged up our boy chaos, I like them. You know? I mean, I would like to think we're on good rapport with them. Green gave them some good advice. I think we're on good rapport with them, a lot better than we are with the cult of Plapendo. It it doesn't hurt. You know, it might be in our best interest to keep these dudes alive. You know, if we're talking about trying to have some allies around here. <laughs> Chaos says, tis but a flesh wound. <laughs> it is. <laughs> but you've you've earned major respect from the from this clan. Because remember, I ended up rolling that that is the general. That was the general. So you have a relationship, I feel, with that particular character. And those are the types of things that I want to have an effect. So I'm going to definitely reward your character um, with some sort of uh, perk. 
um, in, in relation to this to this particular group, whether you walk away with something that you learn from them and the experience, you had a great success today. That exceptional yes is the reason that we're even even in here drinking with these chaotic evil raiders. <laughs> we are drinking with chaotic evil raiders. All right. And, you know, you got banged up. You know, he forgot to use his axe. He forgot how to how to use it well. So when he swung it, it was really sloppy. And he, you almost died. But you're OK. Tis but a flesh wound. But today's success, I, I really think, is uh, contribute. You know, as always, I think Speaker Dawn, that history skill is so boss. It's so useful. Um, but that persuasion definitely helped us as well. And then, of course, Green Green, everybody, everybody. I'll have to figure out a way to close the plot, the plot, tie, tie up why I saw a person leaving the tent with a, with a creature and in the, in, uh, the sack. I'll have to figure out what that was about, but I was, you know, maybe I was just paying it. Maybe I was just paying it. My, I should, I should mind my business. Uh, very Gray says for sure. Allies for strength, uh, for sure. Allies for strangers in a strange land. Yes. So what happens on a final between all of us, we're all, uh, you know, had a, got a little heated in that debate between Speaker Dawn, Green, Green, and Chaos, and in, in the in the in their group. But my character is gonna break the tension once I see we're not able to budge them on their on their logic. I'm gonna break the I'm gonna break uh, the tension. Um, something's going to ha I'm gonna hold up a mug, right? I'm gonna hold up a mug, and I'm gonna I'm gonna propose a toast. I'm going to propose a toast to the general and that amazing story that he just told. I'm going to hype up the general because they all look up to him and he is, you know, second to their leader, wherever their leader is. Maybe that was the leader that I saw sneak out somewhere. That'll come back later. I'm going to toast to the general and, and does, the, does the general, uh, is he on board with the toast? Very likely. Yes, and and what happens? What happens? Gonna roll a plot line. And <laughs> ambush. What do you mean by that? Chaos says he wants us to join them on the next ambush slash raid. Oh, that's a good idea. I like that. Yeah. And that solidifies that solidifies the relationship that we just gained with this with this band we're gonna call them do y'all want me to do y'all want me to uh come up with a name right here right now should i roll for it or come up with it should i use a should i use one of our generators to come up with a faction name or should i come up with it uh hit me with a y if i should hit me with a r if i should roll for it Hit me with a uh, uh, roll. Chaos says roll it. I'm going. I'm going to pull up the fantasy name generator. I love this site. You all know. I'm going to go. <laughs> I'm a do the pirate crew name generator I'm gonna roll an English name I'm gonna roll right and then I'm going to grab the fifth one that is generated here we go one two three four five plunderers of the lost ocean okay I like that so we're gonna call them I like the idea of ocean um I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to say so I'm really re the ocean part really resonates with me works with the desert theme that aligns well with the desert theme absolutely um, this desert the one of the biggest cities in this desert region I really don't want 
I don't want this world to be totally populated. Like I really want it to be, you know, if it is populated, cool. I want that to be rare though. Whenever I encounter a place, I want to roll to see how populated it is. I, I, I imagine Dark Souls, you know, a Dark Souls type world where you're, you're, it's really not that many people except us. And when you do find someone, they're really interesting. And it's, you know, they're alone as well, like lots of hermits. Um, so Mifraferul, Sand City, South Harbor, Mifraferul is such a rare place because it's such a big city. You're not going to see a lot of that. But I say all that to say that I want to name this desert ocean region after M M Sand City Mifraferul. Sand City Mifraferul, I think, is going the, this the big ocean, the big this ocean of desert that we're in is going to be called um, Mifraferul Ocean. Mifraferul Ocean, and these these dudes are going. These people are going to be called called um, plunderers of Mifraferul Ocean. Or something along the lines of that. Plunderers is kind of wordy. Um, plunderers of Lost Ocean. Lost Ones. The Lost Ones of Mifraferul Ocean. Lost Ones of Mifraferul Ocean. Mifraferul's Lost. I like that even better. Good call. Mifraferul's Lost. That. And that last word, that last event where we I toasted and he said join us on the next ambush we're friends if somebody invites you on their next ambush y'all are friends <laughs> hey y'all look that was very fun that was a very productive set session again we're on a roll this is our second one our second session where we were able to have an adventure I, I had a lot of fun with you all here with me I felt like y'all were with me at the party at the raider party <laughs> and uh stay uh keep your eye out for the next episode as well as the previous uh sessions episode and we have a new stranger everybody chris johnson submitted his character in the meta in the meta tower video chaos um you have a character that exists you just got to be reformatted by getting a new ability but please post your character speaker gray or speaker dawn barium gray please post your character as well on the, the meta tower video so other people can see it um, I would like for other people to see who's involved. They, of course, they could see you on the website as well. But I think seeing other people's characters on the Meta Tower video gives people who are coming into the game some ideas and to see what already what kind of strangers that we have um, already personality wise. Very on grace that I think I did. Cool. Uh, but yeah, Chris Johnson is a new stranger. Um, I'm going to be introdu introducing Chris Johnson stranger. Um, in one of these episodes, since I wasn't able to get his stranger completed for today's stream, I'm going to give him a nice little introduction in um, one of the uh, in one of the upcoming episodes. If not, I might tie him into the previous uh, session at the end of it, since technically that's he came after that session. Anyway, had a blast, y'all. Great ideas. It was fun having y'all here with me. I hope to see you again every Wednesday at eight o'clock. Again, just a heads up, y'all, I may or may not, I, I can assure you that there will not be a stream on the 24th, um, but we'll, we will continue um, as normal after that. Um, I was going to stream tomorrow, but I'm going to use that time to really put together some, some cool pieces of uh, content that involves uh, peoples and dragons and uh, exploring the meta block. Chris Johnson, I hope you had a good time. Same with everyone else. Thanks for joining. And I will see you on the other side. Oh.